So in the last video in my texture series, I showed you guys how I make these textures. What we're gonna do is take this texture in to this page right here, and we are going to apply these textures to it. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. So let's just move this off screen right now. And this is what we are starting with. This is a page from Remind Volume 1, and you can actually find this tutorial on remindblog.com. You might notice that this texture is CMYK color. That doesn't really matter. As long as our master file with all of our artwork on it that we're gonna have all the layers on it is RGB, then you're pretty much good to go. If this file is CMYK, you're gonna have a lot of trouble adjusting these textures and colors to look right. You can always convert it at the end. And what I suggest doing is finishing your page and then flattening it and then converting it over to CMYK for the printer if you're gonna print it. If you're not gonna print it, then just stay in RGB. All I need to do is grab this texture. I'm holding down Command and I'm dragging it over into my file. So now we can technically get rid of this. We have our texture in there. It's over top, as you can see right here. It's over top of everything. So we're gonna drag it underneath our, our line or art. And at, you, might notice, you might notice right here I have my flat slayer. So what we're gonna do is put our lines on multiply. There's other ways to do this, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just keep it on multiply, not do anything else to the lines. If we turn on our texture, it looks like that because it's as if we are looking at these lines on an overhead projector with it on multiply. That's kind of what multiply does. So we're trying to hammer these textures in with these flats somehow. How do we do that? It's pretty simple. The bare bones minimum you have to do is put the textures on overlay. And suddenly your textures are kind of gelling with your colors and, with, and it's all happening under your lines. Now what I like to do to, make, to take this to another level is I like to put the textures, instead of on overlay, I like to put them on darken mode and then I put them into a folder. I make a new folder. You can just select what you want and push Command G to make it into a new group, which is a folder. You can title this textures, this folder textures, and then you put the folder on overlay. So now you have your textures on darken mode and your folder is on overlay. Now the reason this is important is because when you want to use these textures in more than just one layer, option command and you just drag that texture and it's duplicating it, right? And let's just turn off this for a second, just so you can understand how this works. If you duplicate this, now suddenly you can create what looks like one giant texture. And the reason for that is because we have these on darken. If these were on normal, they would look like this. And you'd have, this white would become obvious. But since we're putting these on darken, not multiply, on darken, if you did it on multiply, it would actually, it would get darker and you would start seeing the duplication. Okay, we're, we're avoiding that by putting it on darken. So, that's why we put these on darken. So I'm gonna delete these, turn this back on. Okay, so we're gonna to try to position our first texture. And we're gonna just move it down here so it kind of fills up this bottom area. And um, I kind of wanted to play with the texture edge not fully going to the edge of the lighthouse to, so that it, the textures themselves become part of the shading in a way. And now we're gonna duplicate this just like I showed you one of the ways I showed you anyway. And let's do Command T on a Mac and transform this. We're gonna turn it upside down. And we're gonna to try to do the same thing up here that we did below by kind of making this texture not quite go to the edge of this. And we'll hit OK. Now this whole page, this whole area has nice textures. And I could pretty much just start coloring it with just those textures. Now these panels up here, this is a different case. We won't worry about these panels for this tutorial. So you could take these two textures and merge them together if you wanted. So we'll just do that. They're still, 
Now it doesn't matter if it's on normal or darkened since they are merged. The only reason you have them on darkened is so that you can duplicate those layers and they appear like they're the same texture. Now you can still see there's, there's a little bit of a line here. So what I'm going to do is take white, fill in this background white. There's a little bit of white behind here that I'll just color in. Now our sky is white and when we turn back on our color and our lines we have this nice white that doesn't have any texture. Now one of the things that happens when you turn your textures onto overlay, anything that is solid black or white doesn't have any textures in it. It just turns solid white or black. So I'm going to adjust these flats just a little bit and then I'm going to fill this in white. Now my flats have been manipulated just a little bit. Now when I turn on my colors, this white doesn't have any more texture in it. The texture does not get affected by anything that is solid white under overlay mode. Okay, so now you can see we're a little step closer to the finished result of my page that I colored for Remind. It looks about the same. We also picked a different texture and just put it, put it into these boxes here, but I'll leave that alone because we don't need to worry about that. Now how do you get these textures adjusted? Well, there's a couple ways. One thing I like to do when I want a washed out scene and my textures are really bright, Command U pulls up Hue Saturation. You can also grab that by going to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. And this is on my texture layer and I like to drop down the saturation a little bit. You can also go in here and adjust the colors just a little bit, but it looks to me like this is about where my colors were when I, after I adjusted them. Instead of just destroying this texture layer, what we can do is create a filter on top of that texture. We'll do hue saturation. Now this, we will make sure it only applies to that texture by, by moving your cursor right in between the two layers here, pushing Option or Alt, and that little cursor turns into that and that means we're clipping that to this here. This effect only is applied to this texture. And what I want to do is hit this colorize button which takes out all the different random colors and pushes it all into one hue. Now I don't do this all the time but for this layer, for this texture, this scene, I did that back on the original. So I'm doing it again just to kind of imitate the scene and it looks like we had had it about there. Again, if you darken it, then your whites start getting darker too, which isn't a bad look, but we don't need to do that. Okay, we'll just say okay. Now this can be turned on and off, which is nice. So we're getting closer. Now, it looks like some of these colors are wrong. Are, are, are we gonna go in and actually manipulate the texture to make those colors right? No, we are actually gonna go into our flats Use our magic wand again, make sure we are not on anti-aliasing, and we will select different parts. So here's our pants, and we're on the flats, and we'll hit Command U again, and we'll actually adjust those colors, right, to be the color that we want them to be. Let's do that. That's similar to what our finished page looks like. And I'm cheating because I have this finished page here. Now we can select this. It looks to me like I'm just hitting colorize just to, to quickly be able to adjust that color. We won't go exactly the same as this, but we'll get close. It looks like his nose and his eyes are a little crazy colored, so we're going to grab those eyes. We're just going to push them all the way to white. We're going to grab that nose color. We're going to get rid of some of the saturation maybe lighten it. We're going to turn this inside color into more of a gray, lighten it. So this here looks like we have some lighting on it as well, but we're going to just lighten it a little bit, maybe put a little bit, well that's fine, we'll leave it like that. This rock here looks like we need to lighten that up a little bit. These stairs now see there's some flats that weren't created for this grass so I would have to go in there and create that grass flats. But we'll lighten these up. It looks like there's a little bit of green in it so we're just going to get some green into our hue saturation. 
looks like the front of the stairs were, were a lot brighter. Okay, we're getting this hammered into shape. Let's take this. We need to lighten this up. It's a little bright. Let's see, maybe we can push some. It looks like there's a little bit more blues in it. So let's find that blue. Drop down the saturation quite a bit. There's very little saturation anymore in it. And then the top layer, we'll just push that to white. Okay, looks like our little light here is a different color. Drop down the saturation. So we're getting close. Her shirt's not pink. Her shirt is black, so I'm just going to push that to black. This is getting pretty close to this now. So basically, this is how I take my textures, apply them to my comics, and start adjusting the flat layer along with the textures to get the colors and the textures working together. In the next video on this texture series and coloring series, I will go into shadows and light and glows and different effects that you can do to get your comics popping. All right, hopefully this helped. See you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.